Hey, hey, welcome back to Modern Art Blitz. My name is Matt Gleason, I'm your host. We just had an amazing set by MRK. We're now joined by Robert Xavier Bird. Is it Xavier or Xavier? Uh, Xavier. 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 Yeah, I, I want to talk about that X, so I say Robert Xavier. What percentage of people say that? Uh, it's it's 50 50. 50 50-50. 50-50. Some of us get it right, but, but us, yeah. I don't get it right. Yeah. Okay. And of course, Greg Escalante, uh, hiding off in the corner there, kind of the uh, ringleader of the whole uh, the whole scene here. Now, um, Robert, you've got a show uh, in Chinatown. It's been up for um, over a month now. Uh, great response. And uh, tell us, how's your experience been showing at the Gregorio Escalante Gallery? Uh, it's been wonderful. Yeah, I mean, Greg's been, uh, Greg Gregorio has been a uh, <laughs> wonderful person to work with, and uh, I think he, he gets the work, and we're on the, we're on the same page, and it's, it's been a, he's got a really good team around him as well uh, that's been really fun to work with, and, uh, you know. You're saying all the right things. I, on, well, man. what do you want? I mean, I. <laughs> so look, we're in an installation shot of your, of your <laughs> thing. Now, now the, the, the okay. number one way to describe your painting in art world speak is labor intensive. Right. Are you yeah. a labor intensive artist by, by plotting or, or on purpose, or does it just come naturally? Uh, probably all of the above. I mean, I, you know, people ask me if I am a slave for punishment, and I, I think that I, <laughs> I think that I just enjoy, uh, you know, working a lot on one piece that, in the end, is uh, something worth staring at for you know a, a few minutes as opposed to just a few seconds. And um, now your work really rewards uh, multiple viewings. Now I, it's interesting because I've seen your, your paintings; they, they have a wide pop culture birth, um, but their their real subject, at least in my critical opinion, is toys. Right. Is that, is that tell us tell it's, us about the difference between pop culture and toys? Yeah, I mean it's not a. I guess what separates it kind of from from your normal fan art is that it isn't really a glorification of Star Wars. You know, I, I did a 2,000 hour Star Wars painting that's behind me there. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's not really about Star Wars as much as it is about the love that I had for these Star Wars toys and what these toys represent in culture. I mean, they're... they're is it easier to get around the copyright stuff? Uh, like it, I'm, this it, is a painting of a toy. Not it probably a, is. Not I mean, it's not. I'm not painting Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. I'm painting a, a little the Kenner, plastic object, Kenner that, action that figure. Everybody has I, one. Yes. Yeah, and so it's something that, in some ways, they're almost like a still life. Is this? Is there a lot of trying to get back to your childhood with this? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I think as we get older, or certainly as I've gotten older, it's harder to have a sense of awe for the the way that I, I view the world and, and kind of that sense of wonder that. I had when I was a kid is, is has faded, and by doing this, by spending you know thousands of hours on these paintings and making them larger than life, it it's a way of trying to just briefly get back that feeling that I had, um, because I, I don't really look at anything as beautifully as I as I did for these you know the way that I saw these things as a kid. Greg, uh, when you uh, saw Robert's art, I mean, was it was it love at first sight? Did you say I have to give this guy a show, or did you just feel like maybe I should just go collect some Star Wars toys? <laughs> it was definitely love at first sight. Oh yeah. Yeah, I saw maybe on social media, Instagram or something. I saw an image of <clears throat> that Batman painting, and I just it just blew me away because it was as good as any painting pretty much I'd ever seen in my life, and. I didn't know who painted it, and then I saw how big it was, and I just, it was one of those things you just said, who did this? How come I didn't know about him? Who, who is this guy? Why is he showing at that other gallery? How come I didn't get him? All this stuff ran through my head, and that was my first impression, and then he floated into the gallery out of, like, from this guy named Rolf. Rolf. Yeah, Rolf, Rolf. Better, who He floated like Rolf was carrying yeah, him. Rolf does not float anywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. Rolf is <laughs> a... He said, a... I got this guy, you should meet him. And then finally go, oh, he did that painting. Yeah, I want to meet him. So the painting stuck with you all that for oh, all yeah. that time. Yeah, and then when he came in, you know, uh, I had talked to maybe some other galleries about him or <clears throat> maybe my other gallery. And there was this hesitancy to not show up because you could never sell those gigantic paintings. Ah. But, and I, I, so I took that as like something to think about. But then when he came in and talked to me, he presented himself so perfectly and was so well-spoken and articulate. 
all his ideals were in the right place. And then I pictured how good they would look in the gallery. And I go, man, I don't care if I don't sell any of those big ones. I just want them in my gallery. <laughs> so artists, if it, this is a classic, uh, little classic lesson, artists, if you aren't insane, if you aren't crazy, when you meet the dealer, if you aren't high maintenance, here's a guy with, he was giving me political answers just a minute ago. I, I haven't gotten any gossip about working with the staff at Gregorio Escalante Gallery that I'm really trying to dig for. Like, what's the dirt? What's gossip. the dirt? Um, yeah, yeah, so, I'm not so give no, you that everything right is now. even and political, but that's how you get, uh, that does help get shows not being uh, difficult. Now, what's interesting, because we, have, we had the great uh, MRK here uh, on the show to start off with, when you, when you think about what you're doing musically is, um, really sampling based, correct? Mm -hmm. So, Marginals. so, and your art in a lot of ways is kind of sampling when you think about it too. You're, you're sampling visual culture. Sure. Uh, and here we have all the toys that fly, right? Yeah. You even have the yeah. religious statue there at the top. Uh, like, it's, it's a, uh, an angel from a nativity scene. From a nativity mm -hmm. scene. Yeah. So, but, but you have, you have, you have Homer Simpson's flying a plane here, Bugs Bunny, Wonder Woman's flying around here. I mean, you got everybody. Yeah, there. Well, n how no, many are in here? Not, I mean, I, I could not say that, that I have everybody because I, you know, I displayed this painting actually for the very first time uh, at San Diego Comic Con, and a lot of the fanboys were uh, very excited to tell me what I forgot. Oh, <laughs> fanboy <laughs> checklist! Um, party foul! Party foul! Yeah, party foul! You're I, not a true fan. No, I'm I, a I true know. fan. Um, Nobody's more of a fan than me. It's, it's, that's absolutely the case. <laughs> is that, is that um, the, uh, the ego of the Comic-Con man? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, you know, most of the fanboys, uh, and I don't use that term pejoratively, most of the time uh, they've responded very positively. <laughs> <laughs> but they, uh, you know, there's always the, you know, the, the ones that uh, need to tell you what you forgot. And, uh, how, many, how, many, how many flying toys are, and they all aren't functionally flying, but they're all representative of flying. How many flying toys in this painting? Did you, uh, did you lose count? It has uh, roughly 250. Wow, 250. Uh, I, people might think thousands, just, you yeah. know. And now, now, of course, right in the center, you have the Millennium Falcon from right. Star Wars, kind of like this epic. Uh, how, can I, how old are you? I'm uh, 34 years you're old. You're 34. So you were, you were born when Star Wars had just come out, right? It was, you know, it, it was new. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, that was a show. Like, I remember going to the movie. I was a little, I'm a lot older than you. Um, Greg, do you remember the first time you saw Star Wars? Yeah, it was... Uh, seemed like maybe 1977. It was 1977. And it was, it was at this theater and it had uh, like this big set built in front of the theater, kind of like this big thing. And there was like no lines or anything in, in the beginning because science fiction like wasn't a Like it wasn't people. a big hit the first day And then it came something out. happened. And then if you didn't go that first week, you couldn't get in. Yeah. It just went crazy. Yeah. I remember so, that. I remember pop culture kind of changing at that point. MRK, you, do you, do you, have you seen Star Wars? Oh, yes. Okay, just making sure because, <laughs> yes. you know, some kids these days are just a little, <laughs> yeah, too, crazy. little too hip for all that That's stuff. Right. Okay, just making sure. Just man, trying to make, make sure we're all in the same, same plane here. But now, what is the attraction? You see, you got Star Wars and Batman. Is there a connection there? There isn't, except that I, I have... You a, enjoy both. I have an affection for both of them, yeah. sure. Uh, Even the prequels? Uh, they have their charms, Ooh, I guess. Um, okay. uh, I Look, at some point, Disney's going to remake all the prequels. And oh, will, they kind of got to build it. Are you, are, do you think Disney's kind of ruining it? Are they doing a little... Is there no, too much... I mean, are, they into, are they into... Over, is Overdrive a Star Trek term? I don't, now, would you ever do a Star Trek painting? Is there, a, is there the divide between Star Trek and... I mean, there's Star Trek stuff in the flight painting. Uh oh um, There's okay. a lot of Star Trek stuff okay. in the flight I'm painting. I'm just saying, there's, isn't there a divide, though? There is, yeah, and I... I don't really uh, pick a side on no? that one. No, no, no. no. I, and again, the, oh. Is there anything from Saturday Night Live in that painting? <laughs> yeah, there is, Greg. Um, what the, is from Saturday Night Live? Uh, the thing? ambiguously gay duo. Oh, they, they, oh yeah, because they, they do they fly. Make, they do fly. They wow, they're appearance. somewhere in there. Yeah. Well, we got the guy from Back to the Future here. We got, you know, we're just kind of like a burden. Now, now what I have to ask, because the paintings are just such a conglomeration, did you have most of these toys as a kid? No. No? No, no. I. I mean, I. That was the problem. I had to. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of it isn't just about toys I, I had as a kid, glorifying these toys that I had as a kid, but you know, glorifying toys that I coveted as a kid. And ah. you know, this this flight painting is a little different because it's very multi generational. There's a lot of toys from the '50s and '60s. There's toys from that came out last year in the painting, um, or two years ago. Uh, and so it is a little bit, because it's a survey of flying things from pop culture, it, it's less specific to my childhood, but um, 
you know, people are always surprised to learn that I didn't have like a ton of toys as a kid. I only had a couple of Star Wars toys. And so, so maybe these paintings are actually um, a meditation on what what you desire, like on desire more than more than like memory. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could, you know, spend all day breaking down the, oh, really? the psychological I do not. Of, okay, okay. of the, why we, I'm painting toys strict, all day long. We have a strict <laughs> policy on modern art blitz. Your first episode, I don't send you a bill for therapy. Okay. okay? okay. You, the return guests, though. Woohoo! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, so now, now you've got, um, we got Star Wars, we got Batman, we got Flight, and then dinosaurs. What's up with the dinosaurs? The dinosaur painting? Yes, the dinosaur um, painting. I think people who don't like dinosaurs are very suspicious people. <laughs> and you don't like, oh boy. Who doesn't like dinosaurs? Who the hell doesn't like dinosaurs? Um, Everyone's got one dinosaur <laughs> that they can identify one. with. I mean, now, I challenged you. I don't know, you remember my little challenge to you? And you, you, had a, you were ready with the comeback. I kind of fanboyed you. Oh, you did, Do you remember yeah, this? Yeah. I asked him, he has a whole painting of every dis, uh, dinosaur toy you could think of. And believe it or not, I, I didn't see anywhere in there, Land of the Lost, perhaps the greatest moment in dinosaur evolution. <laughs> okay. um, Forget that comment that, that got rid of him. No. But, and you said to me, what, did you, what, did you, what was your retort? I said that as far as I know, there was never a toy line produced of, of, the, dinosaurs of the dinosaurs in, from Land of the Lost. I, and as I, far I, as I know. I had to think back to I've, Christmas 77. Did I get a Slee Stack doll or not? So, but Slee Stacks aren't dinosaurs, right? No. No, because they're no. upright. You they're, know. Well, Greg, did you watch Land of the Lost uh, as a kid? Area. Over my brother, Joe. Joe's shoulder. Ah. He was all into that. Yeah. I, I, I went, there was seven kids in the family, and I basically, once I learned about surfing, pretty much never watched TV, except for the TV was always on with someone watching it, so my brother Joe okay. was, was a big so, so, stack So fan. Joe Escalante is the one who has a thing for Holly, uh, of Marshall, Will, and Holly on Land of the Lost fame. Probably, yeah. Call him now and get, do you want to call him now and ask? <laughs> <laughs> I bet he could see, how, how come he hasn't done a cover of the theme song? That's what I want to know. <laughs> so, and Land of the Lost, is this ringing any bells? Oh, yes. I'm, oh. I'm somewhat familiar. Yeah. Wow. Do you have baby boomer parents? Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, you're, you're kind of you're kind of stuck thinking this was the greatest stuff ever, right? Yeah. You get that lecture a lot. This is great. I mean, you know, the uh, traditions, cultural traditions, especially uh, their evolution, definitely gets handed down through parents. Oh yeah. First. <laughs> and and uh, Robert, have you ever done a music painting? Is there some kind of music you'd want to do, like every Beatles figure or every Rolling Stones album or anything like that? You can no? do toy instruments, no. but that's, they're not very paintable. I, uh, the toy instruments are all, they're kind of almost the same, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> everybody has their thing and I, Yours I, is... I feel kind of lame that I'm just, I've never really been a huge music buff. Uh, but I, you're a visual artist. I'm a visual artist. I mean, I felt... Any album covers in your future? Uh, I have no idea. Do you do commissions? Uh, sometimes, yeah. yeah. Have Every you ever been commissioned to paint somebody's toy collection yet? Uh, I've had people commission me to paint spe specific toys that they want me to, um, but wow. uh, usually the project isn't that exciting, so I don't often take them. Where did you study um, art? I did my BFA, uh, Art and Art History, at Queen's University, which is in uh, Kingston, Ontario. Wait, are um, you Canadian? I am a Canadian. Oh, um, no! I know, um, oh, no! The Trump said we can't have any... Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, no! There's an executive order! I'm one of those, oh, I'm no. one of those people. I'm uh, going to jail over this. Yeah, okay, I'm, so... I'm federal disgusted. prison! Um, okay, so... so, so and, but you, you've relocated to the States. I Well, I've been here for 12 years. I did my master's at the... Uh, my master's in fine arts at the San Francisco Art Institute. Oh, okay. And um, I've been here on visas. Ever since. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I shouldn't, shouldn't even talk about that stuff. <laughs> okay, um, okay. Oh, man. Yeah. MRK, you, you, are you to help me out here? Greg? I mean, uh, Greg. you know, we can stand in front of him, maybe. We got so We can do some kind of human shield. We, we, we might have to have a am I a, Although, am although I a parasite? we need a candidate. Am I just like We a, might have to have a marriage here. I, I want to go to I'm, Canada. I'm mocking current uh, mores uh, coming out of Washington. Right. Uh, some parts of it, at least. Well, right. cloak so, him in a golden shield. Yeah, yes, oh, like well, if I just there you go. Oh, my there we dress. go. There we go. All right. I'm all, I'm all, I can't see me. Wait, we've got, the green, now. we've got the green screen. We can hide. <laughs> oh we can, we're going to hide him. Okay. So, okay. 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 so, so tell me, works. tell me though, uh, was SFAI, was there a great revelation while you were in art school as far as like what you wanted to do? Were you already focused? Did you just, were you just going through the motions? Uh, so I, 
I think when I started at SFAI, I was maybe thinking a little bit more uh, pretentiously about art, if that's a, a good way to put it. I, I, wanted to say, I wanted to say something important with my art, and then I realized that... I would that say that's more idealistically. That's I idealistic, I, I guess, um, to say something important, but I felt like the harder I was trying to say something important, the, again, the more pretentious it came across. And I, I decided just to make this nine foot wide battle cat painting from, from He-Man, and it was the first painting that just felt authentic to me, where it, it really, um, it was something I was passionate about making. Like a and nine foot what? A nine foot wide painting of Battle Cat from He-Man. Oh, Battle Cat. Yeah. That's way after your, young, yeah, your younger you, brother's do days. You, do you know He-Man? No, but only because I have a friend that people said looked like He-Man and then I found out about He-Man. Okay. Actually, do, looking at him now, do you think Greg kind of resembles Skeletor a bit? Oh, that's, <laughs> that is. I had to. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Greg's going to be Googling what Skeletor. <laughs> Well, it doesn't sound very good. The curse, of, the curse <laughs> of the baby boomer. <laughs> What's he, man? That was just like fat bastard. It's, no, 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 it's it's not. It's not. So, so um, you know, so we've we've kind of come like you're painting these paintings of of desire. Okay, you're right. not you're not. This is this is now. Were you? Um, has the art world sort of like how does the art world respond to such a overkill of pop culture, despite the kind of sophisticated themes that bubble under the surface? I mean, what has your reception been? Um, it, one of the most challenging things about what I'm doing is that it doesn't feel like the art really belongs anywhere in a lot of ways because it, it does seem a little bit too, slightly too conceptual and, and obviously inaccessible to a lot of that kind of fanboy crowd. Um, but it's also uh, easy to perceive it, especially if you're just looking at images of the work online, as a little bit too nerdy and lowbrow for the kind of highbrow scene. And um, look, it's not very commercial work, and I mean, it's not commercial at all. It's as far away from commercial as you well, can get in many ways. What's the biggest painting you've ever done? The flight painting? Uh, the Star Wars painting Star Wars is painting 15 is feet by 8 feet. 15 feet by 8 feet. Mm -hmm. Who has a wall that big? Yeah, and I... Although, Greg, that's, you're the dealer. Who has a wall that big? Can you name it? The, pr the Prado. The Prado. Okay. So Museums the goal is. This work. Mm -hmm. I, There's a lot of reasons that they need it. So, so um, now, do you look at this on an institutional level? Do you see? Do you see Robert's work? And he's working obviously that big. I mean, yeah, do, do you yeah. see that? I mean, these are well, epic. I mean, at a certain point, a museum has to think like certain paintings draw a crowd. Like there'll be all these paintings in a museum, but like one painting will have a crowd around it. I noticed that with like Dolly paintings in the Prado and places like that, and or the museum that's right next to the Prado, and he has that kind of gift or way of doing it where it draws a crowd, where you get people like relating to it, drawn in. And also, if you find someone just his age, which I saw in the gallery the other day, that they freak out because all these toys mean so much to them. So at some point, it'll all even out. There's no one doing what he's doing. See, like, I know the characters, but I don't know the toys necessarily. You got the, is there like a, a compendium you can go to and see like every toy? Or did you have to go buy these on eBay? Um, I, so yeah, I have told, uh, you know, a lot of people that without eBay, I'm not even sure my practice as, as an artist would be possible. Because <laughs> um, I couldn't, there's no way that I could go from garage sale to garage sale to find all of these things that uh, I wanted to place in in, in, in the work um, and would eBay. You get the actual toy, or would you just take a picture? No, of I'll, I'll never just take a picture on, off the internet or, or, or whatever. I, I always want to have the toy in my possession when and they're I'm pretty painting cheap, it. Though, right? And, and pretty eBay's made them very cheap um, because it's just made it so easy to, to track them down. Okay. Um, it's a glut of product, that we're, and then everybody's trying to sell one. Nobody's trying to sell for $100 when everybody's well, selling for a buck, right? 15 years ago, it might have been uh, very difficult to find, you know, or to, you'd have to pay a lot of money because, you'd, again, you'd have to go to a specialty old vintage toy store or something like yep. that, and now it's, you know, eBay has made it accessible to, to buy the stuff. What's the most you've ever paid for a toy to make sure you painted it right for a, uh, for a painting? I think uh, it was a fully complete uh, vintage Megatron. Uh, a Transformer. Transformer. It was the initial uh, gun uh, Transformer uh, that was banned, actually, I think, by a lot of school boards in, in America because it looked too Ooh. much like a real gun uh, when it transformed from its robot. When into, it's a truck, it's fine. But when yeah. it's a, okay. So, and how much, did that, how much did that set you back on? I that? think that was, you know, maybe $180, Ooh. something Ooh. like that. Yeah. yeah. It, fe it was tough. It was a tough one. And, it shows a commitment. Um, I, I, 
feel a little bit uncomfortable if I spend more than you know, $30 on any of these things, All but. Right. I gotta bust you on something. Can we, sh I wanna show this picture here. Okay, this is in the Star Wars painting, but it's a painting, it's a picture of Yul Brynner from Westworld. First it's off, not, there's- It's not Westworld. Oh, it's not, what is it? Yul Brynner from the Magnificent Seven? It's the Magnificent Seven. Okay, there's a doll of Yul Brynner, there's a toy? No, so, okay, uh -oh. you're calling me out here. Oh, man, I mean, uh, I was here. freaking out. You're I know. as bad as the Comic Con fanboy. I, you know, I got to say, I'm the minor <laughs> fanboy in me, but it's like there is no Yul, Yul Brynner did not get cast in Star. George Lucas, you blew, was Yul Brynner still alive when so uh, there, there was a there was an overlap? George Lucas, you could have cast him. Yeah. Imagine I mean, Yul Brynner as Yoda. Okay. <laughs> Do we want to? No. Okay. So why is why is Yul Brynner from the Magnificent Seven in your painting of Star Wars? You're 15 foot long, almost every toy is Star Wars, or many of the toys in Star Wars. Organized, why is Yul Brynner in there? What is the uh, impetus? So it's, the painting's filled with a lot of uh, Easter eggs that are um, things that influence Star Wars. It's not just uh, Star Wars toys, but you know, there's a samurai Kabuto helmet because there's a lot of um, you know, elements of, I mean, Vader's helmet was stylized kind of after us. And lightsabers helmet. are like the sword fighting. Right? Yeah, so, and yeah, okay. it's, you know, there's this little portrait of Joseph Campbell in the painting, um, you know, because his, his writings had a lot of influence on, on George Lucas. And um, there's even a toy Nazi soldier in the painting because of the Third Reich element. The dark side. The, the, the empire. dark side's always around. That's right. Um, so, you know, uh, it's, it's said that, you know, Hidden Fortress, a... Uh, a Kurosawa film uh, was a huge influence on the creation of Star Wars as well as a lot of westerns and um, I wanted something that uh, was depicted in the painting that represented both both Kurosawa films and western films and Magnificent Seven was a remake of Seven Samurai and ah. um, which was a Kurosawa So you film. really you're rewarding the viewer like now some viewers will look at that and get it somebody who really knows Star Wars will go ah it's Bay Magnificent Seven, Seven Samurai, Kurosawa they'll, they'll know. I, right? I honestly feel like maybe two or three people that I've talked to have have gotten it most almost everybody says Westworld and then they want to know why I put something from Westworld in the painting um, and especially since Westworld World is back. There's uh, a revival now. There's a revival of Without Westworld. Yule Brynner. Um, with, yeah, there's no, no Yule Brynner in it. So it's, uh, it seems strange that I, to a lot of people, that it's placed there. And it's, it's the one element in the painting that's gotten the most uh, questions. Oh, so I'm, this is not a rare no, thing? No, most, most people want to know why I put what, you know, But Westworld. do you think now George Lucas, if he saw this painting, he might actually digitally put Yule Brynner as Greedo, you think? Um, <laughs> yeah, help me out here, no? Sure, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah? okay, absolutely. of course he would, of course, yeah. okay. Why so, wouldn't he? And now here's the late, uh, great Carrie Fisher. What's, what's, do you, know, do you know any of the Star Wars gossip that she was gonna be in episode nine or whatever thing they're on and now they have to, they got a $50 million insurance policy. I, I don't know any of that gossip. This? No, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I Rest in peace, Carrie Fisher. Yeah, she, yeah. Was, she was such a big part of the next Star Wars that they actually got a, they got a Disney just made a lot of money on her death. Oh, oh, that's a <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. oh dear. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so uh, uh, moving right along. Not no conspiracy here. Okay. So um, when when you paint and you're using oil paint, right? Yes, it's all oil on canvas. Okay. So uh, what was your first oil painting? The first oil painting I ever made. Yeah. Uh, I think was a painting of my dog. Oh. Uh, Wait, I, how old I, were you? I was in high school. Really? I, I didn't start oil painting until I was probably 16 or 17 years old. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I drew every day as a kid. I, I drew a lot. I drew incessantly, but I, I never really started oil painting until um, I got closer to, to college when I decided that I really wanted to pursue a BFA and and uh, make some of these dream paintings one day. That Do I, you like it? Because you can come back to the stuff and it's still wet, you could still move it around. Is that the, is that the advantage of, of oil over acrylic? Yeah, I mean, I, I love oils. I mean, it's not healthy. Uh, it's not as healthy as acrylic and it's, it's not as, you know, sort of inexpensive and quick as watercolor and, and, not as, and it's way more forgiving than watercolor too. You can constantly rework an oil painting. And, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I found that really easy to work with because of it. Um, let, let, me, let me ask you, when you're, uh, when you're making a painting, you have a lot of these ornamental sections. And then on top of the ornamental sections, you're, 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 you're painting things on them. Do you ever go back and, like if a new toy came out about Batman and you still have this painting in your possession, are you gonna, are you gonna add like the next level toy? Do you have like a section there ready? Yeah. Uh, there's a yeah. new Joker doll, you can just throw them in the corner. So there. right now I'm, I'm doing this 
painting that's about nine feet by eight feet, and it, the centerpiece is this uh, life-size gorilla, an actual gorilla, um, and all around him is, uh, all around this silverback gorilla is every ape from pop culture as a toy. Oh, wow. um, Magilla gorilla. And Magilla gorilla is in it. Just sure. checking. Of course. Just checking. Of course, please. Got a rep. Got a rep. Uh, Planet um, of the Apes. Doctor Zayas. There's t yeah. Okay. There's lots of Planet of the Apes. Okay. Um, okay. But I'm you know I'm cur I've, I left a space open for a toy from the new King Kong movie, right. which comes out in a few weeks. I didn't even know there's a new. I didn't yeah. even know there was a new King Kong. Yeah. Uh, Kong Skull Island. Yeah. Kong Skull Island. How about do you remember Lance Link? Secret chimp. You remember? Ah, Greg remembers it. Do you, you ever? I have one? no idea what that is. Oh, I'm gotta sorry. look it up there. Hate. Greg, if Greg saw it on TV, you know and that it's was, vintage. That was another one I watched over my brother's shoulder. He's yeah. a big fan of that. Okay, so I, now we're yeah, looking at the. I love the pirate painting here. Tell me about the pirate painting. And this is small. Oh, that's a very small painting. Yeah, it's only six inches by um, eighteen inches. And uh, I did. You know, I've done a lot of these uh, little paintings that have just three figures in them that are all. You know, like three pirates, three snowmen, three Lando Calrissians, you know, three Cobra Commanders, uh, and so on. Three Batman, Batmans, Batmen. Um, hey, and, and look at the three of you. Look, and there's look at, the three yeah, of you this as works, pirates. This should so, be a okay, well, yeah. um, <laughs> So this one is uh, from, uh, they're actually all Disney pirates. Um, Pirates of the Caribbean, Captain Hook. Is and, it Smedley or Smeagol? What's his, what's his name? Uh, so you got Jack Sparrow on the far right. Okay. And Captain Hook. And uh, uh, that's Treasure Planet. Um, Treasure Planet. It was a, it's the, a lesser known just Disney movie. The Pirate from Treasure yeah, Planet. Yeah, we'll, we'll I'm blanking on his name, which is terrible right now. Uh, I feel like such a fraud. Well, uh, Greg, Greg, uh, <laughs> let me ask you. As an art dealer, don't you have to be a little bit of a pirate to be in this business? That's um, a myth. That's a myth? Is it? You're a pirate of all. No? You've never swashbuckled? Never made an artist ride the plank when they didn't bring in the art at the right time? <laughs> <laughs> no? No? Okay. So, so, and, oh, well, here's three Lando Calrissians, but there was, how many, he wasn't in that many episodes, was he? There's just, there was three different, there's been many different variations of a toy okay. of Lando. I, I actually met uh, the actor who plays... Billy Dee? B I met Billy, Billy Dee Williams. Williams, yes, there's, and, and, and he, at, a, at a restaurant after he had had a couple cocktails, he was, he was, very, he was very happy when I called him Lando. I like, I Lando! Bet. I was like, I Lando! And he was like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Someone brought him over to the table to meet everybody. Yeah. So that was... Uh, very cool. So, uh, good guy. So, okay, so you live in the Bay Area now. I do. So you got yeah. out of SFAI and you just, you, you like the Bay Area? Uh, that's a complicated question. I mean, I think the, the art scene has had a very difficult time in the Bay Area surviving uh, in the current climate of what, you know, the Bay Area is. Um, I have a really rent controlled, affordable live work warehouse space in the southern part of the city. Uh, that has allowed me to sort of stay in that area, um, and it's a beautiful city. I mean, I mean, San Francisco is a gorgeous place, and I. Uh, but you know, there's. It seems like a lot more opportunities in the art world have come in Southern California. Uh, it's a bigger, dare I say, better scene. I I'm not going to disagree. I, okay. I I do agree okay. with that. Yeah. Okay. And and uh, you're uh, showing, well, Gregorio Escalante Gallery here in Southern California, do you have any shows coming up uh, over the next year? No. No? I don't. I haven't. Uh, You're free. I, I think about just one show at a time, and you know, there probably won't be another solo show for at least a couple years. Really? Because it's going to just take, I mean, this stuff just takes forever, right? Yeah, and I... Um, any, any, I, I you're, doing of, the, you're doing the gorilla painting, okay. Well, the gorilla painting, any, any other, uh, any there's, there's always a lot of on the go. Um, oh, here, now here's your dinosaurs. Now, this is great. I love the poster because it tells what every toy is from. And you've even got sports figurines here, Toronto Raptors. Uh, I mean, there's there's, there's Dinger everything. from uh, Colorado Rockies. Oh yeah, so so you've got sports <laughs> and you've got everything here. Yeah. And and well, not everything. I mean, not it's no land of the lost. Well, but if they, it's up. It, the onus is on them to produce the dinosaur toy for right. you. You know, without without their cooperation, forget right. it. Right. Right. Forget it. You know, if they don't have a commitment to dinosaurs, why should you? Yeah, well, that, right. That's how I. Feel okay. exactly. I'm, dig I'm digging the didactic <laughs> yeah, right. here. So, um, so uh, uh, Greg, um, was the show a success? Was, was it fun having hosting this show? That was it. Yeah, I, I thought it was a great success. Yeah. 
And uh, MRK, you've played, uh, you've played Chinatown. You've played the art openings in uh, Chinatown, yeah? Yes. And enjoyed yourself there? Very, very much. Yeah. I mean, that's my favorite place to play is in galleries surrounded by art. Really? Yes. Oh, I thought maybe that was a one-time thing for you. You, pr you prefer it. Yeah, I, I absolutely prefer Better it. Better audiences? People are just more receptive. Um, you know, there's still a presence of alcohol, but it's not something where everyone is just running around willy-nilly, you know, people are there to engage with the environment. I want to hear about the when you play and people run around willy and nilly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's just like playing the bar scene. It's like, uh, just... You get kind of sick Everyone of has, like, playing at, at, at bars or at bar venues, you know, there's an additional agenda that people have in those kind of environments. And, oh, yeah. And, Unless it's something that you really, really love or it's a band that you never get to see or something like that. Um, I mean, especially in the L.A. scene, you know, there's a lot of um, either people are just standing there sort of blankly drinking and absorbing the general scene um, or, you know, they're, it's, it, they're trying to make a social event of it. Oh, and, yeah. So you're just the uh, entertainment. In fact, what's interesting is you are in a, venue, a milieu that is normally reserved for entertainment, and yet I believe that you're an artist. You're actually making art. You're expanding consciousness. And Robert, you're making art. You're expanding consciousness based on the fundamental thing, the, 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 the essence, elemental essence of entertainment. So I like, I like the, uh, the, the synergy here. Greg, I don't, know. All right. I don't know where you fit in, but I know you fit in somewhere. You're bringing it all together. You're the ringmaster. He He's the guy that makes it happen. <laughs> Have you drawn the line between entertainment and art? I think I try to not draw the line between them. Don't build a wall. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Greg Escalante, MRK, Robert Xavier Burden, thank you for being my guest on Modern Art Blitz. We do this every Sunday, live at 5. We did it Saturday today because I'm going to a Super Bowl party tomorrow. I hate the Patriots. We'll see you <laughs> next Sunday. Thank you.